All right, guys, so this is the video um, that starts with the pharmacodynamics, and we really emphasize the whole G-protein receptor. And the questions that you, you'll see on this are pretty much taken from the old NBME exams, and we just kind of retweaked them a little bit. So that's the, the level um, or the depth of the type of question that you'll probably see on those step exams. So if you do me a favor, if this is you know it's valuable, you find this in helpful, is go ahead and share it with another share it with a friend. You know we kind of monitor that and see if um, you know see if we can kind of increase the number of subscribers. It's just more for entertainment and stuff like that. So, but anyways, that would really help, and uh, you know we like following that stuff. So, hope you like the video, and um, we'll see you in the next one. <clears throat> All right, guys. So here we go. It says. Which of the following aspects associated with G-protein second messenger system is directly responsible for the release of intracellular calcium? So anytime that you see this whole G-protein stuff, you, you got to go back to this, uh, to this stuff, what, what we learned. So essentially, you know, we're in the pharma pharmacodynamics section, and I, I can probably pretty much do this with these notes. <clears throat> the pharmacodynamics is what the drug does to the body, okay? And so the drug interacts with the receptors and gives a signal. And I'm going to go over, there's four quick types, real briefly, but I, we need to focus on the G proteins. So four main types, okay? Ligand, and essentially that just says, like, look, um, the molecule attaches to the site, the flap opens, and sodium, uh, sodium rushes in, okay? So <clears throat> for the most part, that's that one. Ligand is pretty, ligand gated is what they say. So a ligand gated ion channel, it hits, the flap opens, sodium rushes in, okay? It's pretty boring. Number two is going to be the G protein, and we're going to come back to this one in just a second because that's where we got to spend our time. That's where the questions on the step exams mainly come from. Third type is enzyme-linked receptors, okay? And basically on this, the, when the, the, lig you know, the ligand, whatever, it, you know, it attaches, and then you have these things, these, this tyrosine down like on the, on the receptor on the inside, so when the ligand attaches, they move, the receptors move closer, the tyrosine became phosphorylated, okay? So tyrosine kinase autophosphorylates, so that's a kind of a key point in the enzyme-linked receptors. Um, and then the, then the protein attaches to the, um, to the phosphate, okay? So the tyrosine phosphate, uh, you know, attracts the protein, okay? And once attached, it has a conformational chain, and then that's when you get your cellular response. So that's enzyme linked. You have it, it, it when the ligand binds, they move closer, the it, tyrosine becomes phosphorylated, and then you have a conformational change, get a cellular response. Okay, enzyme linked. Then the last one is going to be the intracellular um, ligand crosses the membrane, binds into the nucleus. Okay, and like that's an example where cortisol. Um, with that. So anyways, those are just real quick when it comes to ligand, enzyme linked, and intracellular. But where we got to spend, you know, where we got to spend our time is in the G protein. And so you, we have to, well, let's just do it more where we draw it out, just so you can kind of follow, follow along for the most part. So, you know, G protein, a couple receptors, they, they call it seven transmembrane. And all that really is, you know, is you got the membrane, and then when it, it, it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so hence seven transmembrane. And then you have this, you know, alpha attached to GDP, which is attached to gamma and uh, beta. Okay, so all this is, think of it like that. But when, when this occurs and the signal comes down, this stuff, you know, it separates. And then GDP becomes GTP and stays with the alpha, okay? And then this other guy just kind of goes on his way. So this, you know, the alpha and GTP are, are really kind of what activate the next step. So with G protein, okay, this is key, G protein, and you see this all over your, your, your step book, but you have th three types, G stimulatory, G inhibitory, and GQ. Okay, there's just three types. So think of it like this right now. G stimulatory, G inhibitory, and GQ. And what happens is that alpha and GTP, let me say this, okay. Well, we're gonna say adenylate, adenylate cyclase. Okay, big time, gotta know it. So adenylate cyclase, the G stimulatory, if this was a G stimulatory, it goes right here, boom, 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 boom. 
but you're gonna have adenylate cyclase on the other end, okay? But we need this alpha and GTP to attach to it. So when alpha and GTP attach to the adenylate cyclase, then you get the reaction. Uh, a, uh, you know, cyclic, you know, ATP, and then it makes cyclic AMP, okay? So think of it like that. And so as an extra step, and this really isn't in the book per se, because they don't emphasize it, I want you to think adenylate cyclase moves to cyclic AMP, which then moves to protein kinase A, okay? And then it goes to the target, pro, you know, the target site, target proteins, whatever, um, you know, calcium, uh, calcium ion, um, target protein. But the key is G stimulatory, that when alpha and GTP, uh, GTP activate adenylate cyclase, you'll get an increase in cyclic AMP, which leads to protein kinase A, which leads to the target, you know, the target protein and calcium. How they ask the question on the step exams is they're going to give you something that's going to activate, they're going to tell you it's either G stimulatory, they're going to talk about adenylate cyclase, and say, well, if I, if I activate this, what's something that would go up? And you just look down the line. Well, it could be cyclic AMP, it could be protein kinase A, or it could be the, a calcium target protein. Okay? Now, if it's a G inhibitory, what happens? it goes, it just cuts that off. It's inhibitory. It stops that thing. So all you got to do is no G stimulatory. And then for a GI or G inhibitory, it just stops it. So what's going to go down? Oh, there's no adenylate cyclase. Cyclic, cyclic AMP goes down. Protein kinase A would go down. You know, it's less. So it's real simple between the two. G stimulatory, alpha and GDP activate adenylate cyclase, which increases cyclic AMP, which increases protein kinase A, which increases the calcium and the target protein. Okay? Now, with GQ, with GQ, well, instead of it being adenylate cyclase, it's phospholipase C. You know, and once you just say this a couple times, you know, it, it starts just to, you know, you start just to flat out remember it. So alpha and GTP activate uh, phospholipase C, okay? And then from here, it splits, okay? Here, it splits. And you can get diacyl glycerol, which leads to protein kinase C, which leads to the target protein, right? And then boom, you get some activated thing, whatever it is, okay, target protein. But again, phospholipase C can go this way to diacyl glycerol, also known as DAG, and leads to protein kinase C, okay? Now, or it could go this way. It goes down, inositol triphosphate, also known as IP3. And then that would lead to uh, an increase in, in intracellular calcium. Now here's the key, and this was not in my step book, okay? It wasn't in my USMLE um, step one Bible, okay? But this little step right here, it says you can go from intracellular calcium that will activate protein kinase C, okay? So you see, like, you can, you can activate protein kinase C two ways. You can go this way with diacylglycerol, or you can come this way with IP3 going intra in increasing intracellular calcium, and then that increases the protein kinase C. Very important. And again, this pathway wasn't in my book until I came across questions that had it, and I was absolutely confused. So you just, for the G proteins, you just have to know this, but you gotta have it memorized for step one, and really, you write it out a couple of times. G stimulatory and G inhibitory are in the same pathway. Adenylate cyclase makes cyclic AMP, which makes protein kinase A, which gets to the target protein. If it's G inhibitory, it just shuts that pathway down. The GQ goes to phospholipase C first, and then can branch off in the DAG and go to protein kinase C to the target protein, or you can go to IP3, intracellular calcium, and then you can backdoor going up, okay? If you, know, if you know both of these pathways, which you need to, okay? It's just one of those pathways you gotta have. You'll get all the questions right, okay? And then remember the receptors. You know, how do we, how do we memorize the receptors? The GQ, they say, was have 
um, have, you know, histamine 1, alpha 1, um, V1, and then M1 and M3. Okay, that's the GQ. Have 1 M and M. The G inhibitory are your MAD 2s. Okay, your MAD 2s. M2, alpha 2, D2. Your MAD 2s. Everything else is G stimulatory. Okay, so if you know these two, everything else just falls into G stimulatory. Beta 1, beta 2, D1, H2V2, right? There's no little mnemonic or anything for it. It's just everything else. So again, half one M&M &M is here. Your MAD 2s, everything else goes into G stimulatory. Okay, so all right. So that was a lot, but you got, you got to have that down. So back to the question. Okay, back to the question. Which of the following aspects associated with the G protein second messenger system is directly responsible for the release of intracellular calcium? Well, when you look at that, intracellular calcium, well, we know that was, oh, that was down in the, in the GQ, right? Because that was phospholipase C, you know, alpha and GTP, and then that made DAG, this made IP3, and then that increased intracellular calcium, okay? And we could have finished this out and said, oh yeah, that's protein kinase C, and like, just like that, right? Because we had this memorized. So they're saying, which in the G protein second menstrual system is directly responsible for release of intracellular calcium? Well, I just go back up and say, is it this guy or this guy? Um, so I don't see phospholipase C, but I sure see inositol triphosphate. So correct answer is going to be D. All these other guys are not associated. You know, these, these guys are up in a different pathway. And protein kinase C is the one upstairs. Adenylate cyclase is again in the other pathway. And DAG is in the other one. Okay, it's very simple. You just gotta have this memorized and work backwards. Um, and these questions that I'm about, to, you know, that I'm showing you actually came from examples from like NBME level questions, as simple as they look. Now, experimental cells are treated with an agent that will rapidly increase cytoplasmic calcium concentrations and increase cellular diacylglycerol, also known as DAG concentrations. The agent most likely stimulates which of the following? So, you know, when I think you know, again, DAG, where am I at? Well, I'm in the GQ. Alpha goes with GTP. He stimulates what? Phospholipase C, and then he goes up and down. I got DAG, I got IP3, intracellular calcium, protein kinase uh, C. But they ask, what increases DAG? Well, I just go back up, and it should be this guy, uh, phospholipase C. Right? And now sort of triphosphate's down here. He's not going to increase this guy. Protein kinase C, he's after. It's not going to increase him. Protein kinase A was in the other, the, you know, the G stimulatory pathway, and so is cyclic AMP. The correct answer that increases DAG, phospholipase C. And again, another question that was pretty much, you know, I've, I've seen in the NBME questions. This one says, activation of the T lymphocyte occurs when processed antigen binds with the T lymphocyte receptor on the cell membrane and phospholipase C, okay, is activated. This results in production of which of the following components of signal transduction. So you're thinking, oh, great. Phospholipase C. Phospholipase C. Well, I know that's in my, you know, it's in my GQ. Alpha, GTP, they activate phospholipase C. And then I can go this way or that way. DAG, protein kinase C, and then target protein, okay? I can go this way, IP3, increase intracellular calcium, and I can also backdoor it that way. So in this one it says uh, that phospholipase C is activated. This results in production of which the following component. Oh, well, if this is activated, then any of these guys could go up. So really, any of my, any of my answer choices could be any of these. Interleukin 1, interleukin 2, not even part of this thing. Total distractors. Cyclic AMP and cyclic GMP are both what? They're in the G, well, cyclic AMP is in the G stimulatory pathway. It's not this one, not that one. What's going to go up? Diacylglycerol. And again, guys, this was taken, I'm telling you, straight, straight from NBME. Uh, questions that are kind of floating out there. So again, you've got to know the G, uh, um, the G protein pathway, cold. 
This one says, a medication that specifically blocks the capabilities of inositol triphosphate with its intracellular receptor would most likely decrease the activity of which of the following. Oh, okay, so now they're saying, you know, if the inositol triphosphate went down, what else would be going down? Well, we know that that's in the GQ, okay, alpha, GTP, and that acted in that, once that goes on, it's phospholipase C, I can get DAG, diacetylglycerol, which leads me to protein kinase C, and then that leads to the target uh, protein, or I can go IP3, increases intracellular calcium, and then I can also backdoor it that way. So, if this medication blocks IP3, if he goes down, they're asking me what else would most likely go down. Now, if it was a perfect world, they would have, this is my answer choice, intracellular calcium, but they don't. Because what are they trying to test you on this problem? They're trying to test you if you know that there's a connection right here. Okay, and again, this was not in my book, and I had to look this up uh, later on. So if IP3 goes down, and this isn't my choice, but I also know that this guy goes that pathway, so who's going to go down? Protein kinase C. Okay? you got to know that, okay? If there's nothing else you take away from this video is, first of all, memorize the G, the G proteins, have these pathways cold, and then uh, know that extra, that extra little touch there because that's going to make the difference because they like asking those obscure kind of things. Now, the last one. This is kind of the, probably the most in-depth they could probably take it, but let's see if you can get this. A 24-year-old was involved in a recent motor vehicle accident and now in septic shock is given norepinephrine for his hypotension. Which of the following most closely aligns with the cellular uh, process of this medication? Well, you're thinking, oh, great. Well, what do you gotta know? If they give you a medication, right, any of those, those main ones, like norepinephrine, you gotta know how it affects alpha-1, alpha-2, beta-1, beta-2, or D1, okay, any of them. I don't care if norepinephrine, epinephrine, you know, all these guys. How does it affect those? Because we can apply this and how it's affected to the G proteins, right? We got GS, GI, GQ, and it only takes a second, right? It's have one M and M, okay? These are our MAD, that's alpha, twos, and then everything else goes here. H2, V2, right? That's easy. We know that this guy, when um, alpha and uh, GTP, Okay, hopefully I was saying that right on those other ones. Yeah, GTP goes with the adenylate cyclase, which increases cyclic AMP, which uh, increases protein kinase A, which, incre which affects the target protein. It's like it's supposed to be a target thing. Um, and calcium, okay? This one activates it, this one inhibits it, okay? And then the GQ, as we know, Alpha and GTP activate phospholipase C. can go one of two ways, diacylglycerol and IP3. And that goes to protein kinase A. I'm sorry, not A, but C. Even I make mistakes. Protein kinase C, IP3. And that goes to intracellular, intracellular calcium. And then we don't forget that pathway, right? So boom, you can write that out and, and you could do it on paper if you need to, but you'll do it in your head on the test. Um, but this question goes back with, you gotta know they give you the medication. Now, you have to understand what norepinephrine does to these receptors. And then if you know it's in your step, you just step book, you gotta know that it's really impacted with alpha one and alpha two, just a little bit of beta one, but no beta two, no D one, okay? So then you apply this, if they said, well, how does this medication affect, does it increase phospholipase C, increase beta 2, D, you know, does it decrease IP3, decrease DAG? I mean, they're really taking it one step even back. So it's norepinephrine, this is how it works. So with that being said, alpha 1, which we know is here, 
it really activates that one. So I would say this goes up, phospholipase C gets activated. So I like, you know, increase in phospholipase C. I like that. If they had in, if they had DAG, IP3 kinase, protein kinase C or intracellular calcium, I'd be all over that because norepinephrine really likes alpha-1. Uh, and then alpha-2, okay, but there's none, when I look at my answer choices, increase beta-2, well, if I really looked at this, norepinephrine has nothing to do with beta-2, so it doesn't increase or decrease, so much of a distractor. And then just the fact that it says decrease IP3, no, it should be increased. So boom, that's off the table. Decrease DAG, no, it should activate, it should increase it. So that's off the table. So I know norepinephrine really activates alpha-1, and you can see that this would actually increase this guy, increase any of these as an answer choice. But they took it one step backwards to where they're testing your knowledge of how norepinephrine affects the receptors. Um, you know, alpha-1 vasoconstricts, and it's the and there's like a, a ref, the reflex the reflex bradycardia that occurs from that offsets yeah you know, really offsets the B1 so most of these answer choices up here wouldn't wouldn't really take into account so anyways guys this is the the, the a really in depth question so know how the medications are affected but I can't stress enough you gotta know G protein you have to know the G protein and if he goes back and eventually eventually we get these on the website. Um, this is the beginning of pharmacodynamics, what the drug does to the body. Know the different types of receptors, but focus on the G protein. And if you know it like this, you'll be able to answer all the questions on the exam. So, hope it was helpful.